Okay, in this video, we're going to cover 10.2. So we're going to take a little bit of a break from solving those systems of equations, and we will come back to that with some more techniques in the next few uh, videos. But for now, we just want to talk about uh, matrix in general and some operations. So we're going to talk about is what makes two matrices equivalent. We're going to talk about how to add um, and subtract, how to do a multiplication of a scalar, meaning a regular number, not another matrix, and then how to multiply two matrix ma matrices together. Okay. Um, and then we'll even get to some uh, applications of it all. Okay. So let's go ahead and go on with talking about what makes two matrices equivalent. Okay. So a matrix can be denoted using an uppercase letter, right? Like A, B, or C. Um, and then a matrix can be a representative element enclosed in brackets, such as, but we don't usually use this one, so I'm gonna cross that out. But anyway, um, a matrix can be denoted by a rectangular array of numbers, such as this, where each numbers, each entry is labeled, right? By its position. So two matrices A and B are considered equal when every single entry in its corresponding spots is equivalent to each other, okay? So that is what will make two matrices equivalent. So um, for example, if you think about it like this, one, zero, two, five, that is equivalent to one, zero, two, five, versus um, one, zero, two, five, is not equivalent to two, five, one, zero. So remember I swapped the rows. Those are not their row equivalent, but the matrix, the whole matrix itself is not equivalent, okay? So that's essentially what they're talking about over there. Each corresponding, so first row, first entry, first row, second entry, second row, first entry, second row, second entry, right? every single corresponding spot needs to be equivalent, okay? Whereas here, you'll notice that one is not the same as two, zero is not the same as five, two is not the same as one, and five is not the same as zero. So all those, these are row equivalent, they are not matrix equivalent, okay? So now we do have something called matrix addition, and that essentially is just defined by adding each corresponding, um, entry. So if you've got row one, first entry, that's going to get added to row one, first entry in the other matrix. Okay. They're very respective. Okay. Um, so for example, if you took these two matrix and asked to add them together, you're essentially going to add this one and this one together to get this entry. Okay. I'm definitely going to need some colors in this section because this section does get confusing. Okay. Give me a second while I bust out my colors here because I know I'm going to need them. So the other one is if I were to take the second entries at the top and add those together, you get this second entry down here. If I take um, the first entry at the bottom and add it to the first entry at the bottom there, that's where this came from. And then if I take uh, this, um, bottom right entry and add it to this bottom right entry, that's where they got the value in this bottom right entry, okay? And they try to write it out for you. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. So just so you know where all the values are coming from, okay? Similarly, this first one is gonna get added to that first one, which is why they get zero. Here, we're gonna have this one with this zero. When you add those together, you get one. When you have negative two plus zero, you get negative two. When you have one plus zero, you get one. When you have two plus zero, you get two. And then when you have three plus zero, you get three, okay? So that is essentially how this all plays out, okay? Now here, same thing, when you add one with negative one, you get zero, three with negative three, you get zero, and negative two with two, you get zero. So we're just doing it very respectively. 
Now, um, these two you cannot add because this one has an extra column and you don't have an extra column over here to add the corresponding values, okay? So if they were to ask you to do A plus B, A plus B is undefined, okay? Because you can't add them if they don't have the same dimensions, okay? They have to have the same dimensions in order for you to be adding the respective numbers in the same positions, right? So if they don't have matching order or matching dimension, then you cannot add them, okay? I think in the web assign, it says to add if possible. If impossible, then type in the word impossible. So if this problem was on web assign, you would just write in impossible. So if they had this and then they had the box. Oh, and that's another thing I need to mention. In web assign, it automatically has boxes like this. And then it has arrows, one going in, one going out, one going up, one going down, okay? These little arrows allow you to change the dimensions of the matrix, okay? So if you wanted to make it just one column, you would press the left button and it would make this problem disappear. If you wanted to have a third column, you would hit this arrow and it would pop up another third column, okay? If you only wanted to have one row, you would hit the up arrow and it would make this row disappear. If it had this and you wanted a third row, you would press down and it would open up a third row, okay? So you can use those arrows to manipulate what you want it to be. When it's undefined, I just need to type in the word impossible. So what I wanna do is I wanna shrink it in so that it just has one row. And then I wanna shrink it in again so it only has, or sorry, it only has one column. And I wanna shrink it in going upward so that it only has one row. And then that way I only have one box. And in that one box, I would type in the word impossible. Okay. So you do need to shrink it to one box before you're allowed to type in the word impossible in web assignment. Um, now let's go ahead and talk about what are called scalars. So numbers, just regular numbers are considered, are called scalars, okay? And this word scalars will come important again later when you start to talk about vectors, okay? And I think they talk about vectors in pre-cal and then they talk about them again in Cal 3. So you definitely want to remember that word scalar because it just means a regular normal number, okay? Not a number inside of a matrix, just a regular number, okay? Um, so if you want to do a scalar multiple of a vector, essentially what you're going to do is you're going to multiply every single entry by that scalar, okay? So I'm sure they have an example on the next page. Um, I'll give you an example if they don't have one. So for example, if I have A equal to 1, 0, 5, 2, um, and I want to find 2A, that just means I'm going to multiply every single entry by 2. So this will become 2, 0, 10, and 4. OK? Oh, you can't see. So if this was the matrix that I started off with, and they asked me to find 2A, this is 2A, multiplying every single entry by 2, okay? That's a scalar multiple. Now, the symbol negative A represents the negation of A, okay? Which basically means you're taking the scalar negative 1 and you're multiplying it by A, okay? And A and B... If A and B are of the same order, then A minus B is actually the same as adding negative one times B, right? This minus sign can be written as negative one times B. And then it's really just addition that you're working with, okay? Now you don't ever have to write this, just understand that that's what is happening behind the scenes, which is what allows us to talk about subtraction, okay? So here's, um, it says it is often convenient to rewrite the scalar multiple C of A by factoring out every entry in the matrix. For instance, in the following example, the scalar one half has been factored out of the matrix. So notice that all of them have a two in the denominator. So they thought, let me factor out a one half and I can 
but then you're basically dividing this by one half to get one. You're dividing this by one half to get negative three. You're dividing this by one half to get five and this by one half to get one. Okay, so you're taking what you have there, negative three over two, and you're dividing it by what you're trying to factor out, which is one over two. And notice that it does give you negative three. Now that's not typically used a whole bunch, but it's just letting you know, because there may be instances in the future where you might have to do that. And it's just letting you know that you can, okay? Now, we do have a commutative property of addition. So you can, whether you add A on the left and B on the right, or B on the left and A on the right, that sum should still come out the same. Um, mostly because you're just adding a bunch of entries and it doesn't matter really what order you're, multi you're adding them in, it will still come out the same. Um, the same with the associative property for matrix addition, right? You could add these two guys together, then add the result to the A, or you could add these two together and add that result to C. You would still end up with the same matrix. You also have the associative property of scalar multiplication. So I can multiply my two scalars first and then multiply all the entries by that value. Or I could multiply my matrix by one of the scalars first and then multiply by the other scalar later, okay? It just depends on what you wanna do. This is probably the most preferred one. Um, and this is called the F scalar identity. So you can have, if you have just A by itself, you can visualize it with the coefficient, right? With the scalar uh, one in front. And then uh, this is the distributive property and there's two ways to distribute. You can take a scalar and distribute it over the sum of two matrices, or you can take a matrix and distribute over the sum of two scalars, okay? So essentially you're just gonna do C times this, which gives you this, and C times B, which gives you that. And the same thing here, it's right-hand multiplication. So you do A times C, and then you do A times D. Now, um, note that the associative property of matrix addition allows you to write expressions such as A, B, and C without ambiguity because the same sum occurs no matter how the matrices are grouped. This same reasoning applies to sums of four or more matrices, okay? So it doesn't matter how many there are, if you add them all together, it doesn't matter the order you add them in. Um, one important property of addition of real numbers is that the number zero is the identity. identity. That is that any scalar number plus zero is that same scalar number. For matrices, a similar property holds, okay? If you have Z, it's just like a zero, okay? And it's called the zero matrix. It is a big giant zero, okay? And so, if you were to take any matrix and then add a zero matrix, and a zero matrix is a, is a matrix, but all the entries are zero, all of them, okay? If you're adding every one of those zeros to all the entries in A, you're just gonna end up with all the entries in A, right? And so that's what they're mentioning there. Now, O is called the additive identity because no matter what matrix you start off with, if you add the zero matrix, it's gonna be the same matrix, all the same entries, okay? But the zero matrix is pretty general, okay? The zero matrix can be any dimension you want, any dimension you want, you pick what the dimension is. And if you're trying to add something, then you probably wanna make sure that you have it the same dimension as what you're trying to add it with. Since we already know that you can't add matrices together when they don't have the same order or the same dimensions, okay? So they're just letting you know that it doesn't matter how many rows or columns you have, they're both called the zero matrix if all the entries are zero. So we do have this. Now, um, we know that when you have real numbers, you can subtract A on both sides, right? But instead of subtracting A on both sides, they write it as plus a negative. And we know that a positive plus a negative zeros out, right? And so you eventually just get X all by itself. And we know that plus a negative is the same as subtraction, okay? 
So essentially, I don't ever write this step. We never usually write this step. Instead of writing that step, what we usually do is write minus A and minus A underneath. And then these would cancel and I'd have X. And then on the right-hand side, I'd have B minus A, okay? They're asking you, they're basically doing the same thing. So here I can subtract this matrix on the right side, but then I have to subtract the matrix on the right side over here. Now, over here, this matrix minus this matrix, well, all of them are gonna zero out. And then if I add a bunch of zeros to that matrix, it's just gonna give me the same matrix. And then over here, I still have to actually compute B minus A. Now matrix multiplication is pretty tricky. I mean, I can't sugarcoat that. It is, it's difficult. <laughs> Um, it's confusing at first, but I think once you start getting the pattern and, and, you know, playing with enough of them so that you can see that pattern, um, it is not as difficult as it seems at first, okay? And I really don't, this was like my biggest problem when I was taking math classes, excuse me, is the way they note everything and then the way they define everything that has to do with matrices. I really have to see examples in order to understand what they're talking about when they write these definitions in this notation. So it says <laughs> it's a definition, but it doesn't help me personally. So it says you have a matrix A that's an M by N matrix and you have a matrix B that's an N by P matrix. Okay, so different dimensions. Okay. The product AB is actually going to end up being an M by P matrix, okay? And the way it works is that you're going to multiply all the people in the second column, in the first column, by all the people in the first row of the other guy, okay? Um, and it just keeps going, not all of them, it's just like respectively. So then the second row times, the, or second column times the second row third column entry times the first column entry, so on and so forth. It's really confusing on how to read this, okay? I, I'm sorry, it just is. Um, what's important is that you need to find the dimensions of A, which are M by N, and then that's gonna get multiplied by the dimensions of B, which are N by P. And what happens is, is that these have to be the same in order for you to do the product. So if those numbers are not the same, then that product is impossible to do, okay? But if they are the same, then essentially these just wipe each other out and your result will be an M by P matrix, okay? So that's how that works. So you can look at these things and figure out whether or not they can be multiplied or not, um, but to actually do it is really, really complicated. So what are they gonna to try to say here? Cause it might be still confusing. The definition of indicates a row by column multiplication. That's true. Um, you multiply the entries in one row to the corresponding entries in column B. Okay, and I'll explain all that things in a little bit cause it's really weird. And no matter how many times I try to word it, it doesn't make sense. Um, so it says, notice here, it says you have two matrices, A is N by N and B is N by P. And so we know that these have to be equal and then that will give you the dimensions of AB, okay? Here they have a matrix for A and here they have a matrix of B. And what they're saying is, is you're basically gonna take all of this row and multiply every single entry by all of this column. So you're gonna take this row times this column individually. So one times one, this one times this one, that one times that one, the last one times the last one. And then you're gonna add up all those results, okay? And you're gonna do that for every single one. And the row that you take and the column that you take, that's exactly the position that the value will go when you're done with all the multiplication and addition, okay? So since I took an entry from the top, the top row and the first column, that's going to give me this result right here. If I take the third row, I'm gonna put a box, and the second column, then my response needs to go into the third row and the second column, which would be two, three, and that would be the result there, okay? So 
whichever row you take and whichever column you take, that literally tells you the position of where your result goes. Now, I we need to see an example because this is great, great. Okay. So, <laughs> so here we're going to try to explain this out. So they're saying, try to find this product. Well, let's see. A is a um, three rows by two columns. And then B is two rows by two columns. And so these do match, so it is possible. And I should end up with a three by two. So what that tells me is that when I'm done, I'm gonna have three rows with only two columns, okay? Um, so I will have three rows, but two columns. What does that mean it's gonna look like? It means it's gonna look like this. Right, this is three rows, but then only two columns of entries, okay? Now, how do I get what goes into each spot, okay? Notice that this thing is in the first row, the first column, okay? So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the first row times the first column. Only take rows of the first one and columns of the second one, period, okay? So what do I get? When I do negative one times negative three, I get three. And then when I do three times negative four, I get negative 12. When I combine those two together, I end up with negative nine in there, okay? Now I'm gonna do the second, the first row still, so first row still, but now I'm gonna do the second column, okay? So I can get this entry. This is still the first row, but now the second column. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one times two, negative one times two, which is negative two, three times one, which is a positive three, and I get a one in that entry. Now I'm gonna go on to the second row. So I'm gonna take the second row, and if I want this box, I have to take the first column. So then I have four times negative three, which is negative 12, negative two times negative four, which is positive eight. And so then in here, I get negative four. Now I'm gonna move on to the next letter. So now I'm in the second row still, but now I'm in the second column. So four times two is eight, um, negative two times one is negative two, and that gives me a six here. Now I'm gonna do my third row. So third row times first column to get me this spot. So five times negative three is negative 15. Zero times four is just zero. So this is negative 15. And then finally, I need the bottom row times the second column. So five times two is 10. Zero times one is zero. And so I get 10, okay? Now here, they wrote it all out. So not only did they tell you what they were, they didn't just tell you the results like I did, they told you what they were multiplying together. And then those are the results, okay? But notice that they do still end up with the same values as I did. Negative nine, one, negative nine, one, negative four, six, negative four, six, negative 15 and 10, negative 15 and 10. So just to get each entry, you will already know the, the dimensions just by looking at these dimensions. And then just consider which spot are you trying to figure out because that's the row and the column that you need to be putting together, okay? Again, we should have more examples, so don't stress on that if it's not, if it's not like you automatically get it. I don't expect anybody to automatically get it. You gotta practice it. Um, so there is an associative property, but notice that there's no commutative property. Nowhere in there does it say that AB is the same as BA, and it's not, okay? Take, for instance, AB. My A matrix was a three by two, and my B matrix was a two by two. And that was what allowed me to put it together, and the result was a three by two, right? Because those canceled on the inside, and the outside tells me my dimensions. But if I were to do them the other way around, it would be a two by two times a three by two. 
and look at that. They're not the same. So they, it's impossible to do that multiplication. So if it's impossible to do this multiplication, how on earth can they be equivalent, right? So just keep that in mind that commutative property does not apply to scalar multiplication. If it has A in front of B, you have to multiply it like that. Otherwise, you're going to be taking the wrong rows with the wrong columns, and it should have been the other way around, okay? So definitely be careful with that. Now, we did talk about that identity matrix in the last video, but it's where you have a matrix and all the diagonals are ones, those leading ones, and everything else is a zero. It's called an identity matrix, and they usually use an I to represent it. And your identity matrix is always a square matrix, which means it will have the same number of columns as it does rows. And depending on how many rows or columns that is, that would be your subscript. For instance, if I wrote I2, that is gonna have two rows and two columns with my ones in the diagonal and the zeros everywhere else. If I wanted to talk about I3, that would be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And that's the matrix, the diagonal ones, everybody else zeros, okay? Normally we just write I, we don't never necessarily write the subscripts. The subscripts just tell you the, the dimensions. So just understand that if you were to do the computations for any um, matrix times the identity matrix, it does turn out to be the same thing. If you take the identity matrix times the matrix the other way around, it also happens to be the same. So this is the only case where if you take a matrix times another matrix and the reverse, you do get equivalent. It only works with the identity matrix. It is not guaranteed to work with any other matrices. I mean, it would be really special coincidence if it actually did equal and they weren't, one of them wasn't the identity. So for some applications here, it says um, matrix multiplication can be used to represent a system of linear equations. Um, note that the system below can be written as the matrix equation A, matrix A times matrix X equal to matrix B. So essentially what they've done is they've taken the coefficient matrix, which we talked about in the last section, Okay, then they multiply that by the variable matrix, which is just your variables in order. And then that equals your constant matrix. Right, and don't you have coefficients times your variables, right? And then you have it equal to your um, constants. So they literally just take all the coefficient matrix and then this first column was x1, so that goes here. Second column was x2, so that goes there. And then third column was here, okay? And if you were to take these three times those three respectively and add them up together, you get this side. These three multiplied by these three respectively and add them all together, you would get this. And then these three times these three respectively, right? And if you add them all together, you would get this row down here, okay? And that's how that works. Now, that will come in handy for us later once we learn inverses in the next section. But for now, we're just gonna take the information, okay? So here it says, write this system as a matrix equation. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna write it as the coefficients. So the coefficients are one, negative two, one, um, missing x1, one x2, positive two x3, two, three, negative two. And my variables are, there's three of them. So it's x1 first, then x2, then x3, and then my constants, negative four, four, and two. And that is, um, written in the matrix system. It says use Gauss Jordan elimination on AXB to solve the matrix. So they want me to do this. Mm 
Oops, I need to put the bar. See, notice there they put the bar instead of the dots. I don't know why they keep going back and forth between those, but whatever. So if I use Goss Jardin, this is already a one, this is already zero, and make that one a zero. So I'm gonna do negative two row one plus row three to give me my new row three. So then that would be negative two, four, negative two, positive eight, two, three, negative two, two, zero, seven, negative four, 10. So then I have one, negative two, one, negative four, zero, one, two, four, two, three, negative two, two. Now I do have the one in the next diagonal position. So I'm gonna use it to turn these to zeros. So I need a positive two times row two plus that row one so I can replace that row one. Then here I need a negative three row two plus this row three so I can replace that row three. So let's see row two times two is zero, two, four, eight row one, I get one, zero, five, four, and over here, negative three. So zero, negative three, negative six, negative 12. Two, oh, I messed up. I should have put, I should have replaced my row three and I forgot to replace my row three. Glad I caught it now before I finished and we kept going. So this should have been zero, negative four, 10. Oops, zero, seven, negative four, 10. There we go. And so it actually wasn't a three, it should have been a seven. So it actually should have been multiplying by a negative seven. So that I can replace the seven with a zero. So this times negative seven, this times negative seven, that guy and that guy, and then row three underneath. So I get zero, zero, negative 18, negative 18. And so then my matrix becomes uh, row one becomes this. Row two is never getting replaced, so that one stays the same. And row three has now become this. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna change this guy into a one. So I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. So one over negative 18 times row three to get me my new row three. So I can use that one later to change these to a zero. So let's see what we're gonna end up with. We're gonna get um, row one and row two are gonna stay the same. And then row three, zero times one over negative 18 is zero still. I get one and one. And so that's what I have. Now I need to use this one to change these to zero. So for this one, I need a negative five times row three plus that row one to give me my new row one. So this can turn to a zero. Then I need a negative two times row three plus row two to get me my new row two, hopefully with a zero right here. So let's see, we get zero, zero, negative five, negative five, one, zero, five, Four. And then here, zero, zero, negative two, negative two, zero, one, two, four. So then my matrix becomes this for row one, this for row two, and then row three is not changing. So what does this tell me? It tells me X equals negative one y equals two and z equals one. So my solution point is negative one, two, one. 
And that is it for this problem. Now we can go ahead and, um, and if it asks you for the matrix solution, it's just like this. X1 will equal X1 equals this guy, X2 equals this guy, and X3 equals that one. So same thing as before. Now, here's some practice problems like what you will see in um, the web assignment. So we only have, I think, three practice problems. So we're gonna take a look at these and then we'll go from there, okay? So for this one, it wants me to do all the sums. These are both two by two matrices. So I should be able to do any of the additions and subtractions because they do have to be the same dimension in order for me to add and subtract. And they are, so I should be able to do this. So for A, I'm basically gonna add each entry. So two plus negative one is equal to one. Negative one plus negative one is negative two. Negative one plus one is zero. One plus seven is eight. Now for, for B, it says to do A minus B. So two take away negative one is actually two plus one, which becomes three. Negative one take away negative one is negative one plus one, which is zero. Negative one take away one is negative two, and then one take away seven is negative six. Now two A means I'm gonna multiply every entry in A times two. So this will become four, negative two, negative two, and two. And then D is a little bit more complicated. So I might have to work D out and then write the answer. So for D, it wants me to do 2A minus 5B, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do two times A minus five times B for the first entry. Um, two times negative one plus minus five times negative one. Then two times negative one minus five times one. Two times one minus five times times seven. And so what do I get here? I get four plus five, which is nine. Um, negative two min or plus five, which is three. Negative two minus five, which is negative seven. And then two minus 35, which is negative 33. And that is 2a minus 5b. So row entry by entry, two times this guy minus five times that guy. Two times this guy minus five times that guy. Two times this entry minus five times that entry. Two times this entry minus five times that entry. That is how it works. Um, and so for number two, it wants us to actually multiply. So A is a three by two matrix, three rows, two columns. B is a two by two matrix. These do match. So the result will be a three by two matrix. Okay. So then let's see what that three by two matrix is gonna look like. Three rows and two columns. Okay, so I like to use my colors instead of writing everything down, I like to use my colors. So for this first spot, it's the top row, first column. So that means I need to take this top row and this first column. And so that's gonna be First one and first one is gonna be negative two, and then eight times zero is just zero. So what do I get in that first entry? Just negative two, okay? Now I'm gonna move on to the next one. So now I'm gonna move on to uh, the second entry. Remember there's three rows and two columns. 
So I'm going to take that first row again, but times the second column. So first ones together, that gives me negative three. Second ones together, that gives me positive 48. So I actually end up with a 45 here. Now we're moving on to the next row, okay? So I'm going to take the second row times the first column. First guys multiplied together, and then second guys multiplied together. That gives me negative six. Now we're gonna take the second row again, but times the second column. So the first guys multiplied together, and then the second guys multiply together and it's a positive. So I end up with, I think it's 27, negative nine plus 36. Yes, 27. Okay, now we're gonna move on to the bottom row and first column. So the first guys multiply together plus the second guys multiplied together. Actually zero times two is zero, isn't it? And zero plus zero is zero. And then lastly, um, I'm gonna use red, I don't have red. So I'm gonna do the bottom row times the second column. So the first guys together is zero and then three times six is 18. So I actually end up with 18 here. So again, I like to use colors just so that I can symbolize each row and each um, thing. If you don't use colors, just keep in track which row and which column you've been using throughout the whole process. And you, that way you put the numbers in the right positions, okay? Okay, last one. It's also asking me to find the product. Um, this matrix is a three row by two columns. This matrix is a three row by three columns. Notice that these are not the same, okay? When those two are not the same, the multiplication is impossible. So make sure you get one box only by using your arrows left, right, up, down to get one box only. And in that box, you would just type in impossible. And that's the answer there. There's nothing to do because you can't do it. They don't have the correct dimensions, okay? But that is it. Definitely practice the multiplication. That one does take a bit to get. The addition and subtraction is not too bad because it's just entry by entry, right? But with the multiplication, that one can be tricky. I really prefer to use colors you may have to keep watching that part of the video over again um, until it starts to, you start to see that pattern, okay? Um, but once you get that down, then, then you'll be fine with your matrix multiplication. And other than trying to complete the homework assignment and trying to um, work on the problems that you see in the review, the matrix multiplication won't come up a whole bunch in the future, but it, it could come up in certain places in the engineering field, okay? So that is it for this section. I know it's probably a little lengthy, but it's all covered. I tried to explain it all, use some colors. I wish you the best. Um, and then the next section, we'll actually get into a new concept for matrices called um, inverses, okay? And those will actually help us to solve some systems without having to do that gauss jordan elimination, okay? So that is it. You guys have a great day.